a great act of worship that was mentioned in the Quran more than 90 times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it one of the most important ingredients of all Islamic manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people who have it and He always supports and helps the people who have it and keep it and maintain it. What is that beautiful act of worship? Stay tuned to find out. I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Where's my place in your great plan? Oh Lord, help this man Lord, I am just a simple man Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to a new episode of One Step Closer I'm your host, Kareem Eid One Step Closer is a show intended to take us all towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards His Jannah, His Paradise. A show to take us a step closer towards our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to learn from his perfect example and to take us towards a more deeper understanding of our religion, al-Islam. During this show, we will explore a lot of acts of worship that we never considered them to be so. And I'd like to advise you and myself of this month of Ramadan to take advantage of this month, this blessed month of Ramadan, a month where the gates of hellfire are closed and the gates of heaven are open. A month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obedience easy for us. He made us, He made it easy for us to worship Him during this month. So we should all take advantage of this month to take a step closer towards changing our lives. And remember, you can always call us during the second and third th- segments of this show on this number. Country code 202 38 Five 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 two four eight or two four nine, or you can send us an email at one step closer at huda TV. Let us all welcome Sheikh Ma'tasim Al Hamidi. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Thank you, Kareem. Thanks for being on the show. It's my pleasure. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters, patience is such a great value. Patience is a great worship in Islam, but if we learn how to maintain it. What is the definition of patience? Patience is to have self-control. Patience is to have self-restraint and keep our, to keep ourselves on the truth no matter what. That's the meaning of patience. So in a nutshell, patience means self-control, to keep oneself on the right path. So no matter what happens, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what you're dealing with, Patience is to keep self-control, that you maintain yourself or you keep yourself on the, on the right path to follow the right course of action. Now the scholars of Islam paid great attention to the concept of patience or patient perseverance because it's a great value in Islam and many people don't see it as an act of worship. It's one of the most important principles in Islam and it's a great act of worship because if you used to remember previously we said that anything, to know that if anything is an act of worship or not, We have to find out whether Allah loves that or not. So if Allah loves it, if Allah is pleased with it, be sure that it's an act of worship and patience is so. Now the scholars of Islam have detected three main types of patience in Islam. So what are these three types? The first type is to have patience towards obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be patient on his obedience. The second type is to have is to restrain oneself from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have patience not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third type is to have patience towards complaining about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. We should not complain about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us, to be patient on everything, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for us. If we manage to attain all that, if we manage to have all that, then we will have patience. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about those who have patience? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says in the Quran, the meaning uh, or the translation of the meaning of the verse, says Allah sh- says, We shall test you with loss of, uh, with some fear. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ We shall test you with some of fear. And uh, poverty or uh, starvation. 
وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ So we shall test you with even loss of a soul. Some people will die, some dear ones will die. And you will go through hardships, through different circumstances. Then Allah says at the end of the verse, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to the patient ones. The ones who handle these calamities patiently. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah explains what is the attitude, what is the response of the people of patience. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ They are the ones when they are hit with calamity, when they are hit with hardship, or what they say, قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ They say, we, from Allah we, we, we have come. Allah created us. Allah brought us into existence. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ We belong to Allah. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We shall return to Him. So they remind themselves of the reality of this world. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah says, upon those, there are prayers from Allah. It means praise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises such people. So imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises you. How wonderful, how great. A position that is. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ Allah will praise them and upon them, Allah will shower on them His mercy. And then Allah says, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ those are, those, those are the ones who are truly guided. So patience is a sign of the people who are truly guided. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah loves the patient ones. So if, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, you want Allah to love you, hold on to patience. You will earn the love of Allah. And Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Indeed, Allah is with the patient ones. So if you want Allah to help you, support you and assist you in all, in all situations, in all aspects of life, then hold on to patience, Allah will be with you. Now this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about patience, but how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us or instruct us to hold on to patience? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And be patient, and patience only comes from Allah. And he also told them in Surah Al-Insan, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ تَنْزِيلًا فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ We have brought down the Qur'an on you. So be patient to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Asr, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this, in this surah, he swears by time. That man, the humankind, human being, is in great loss. Except those who believe and those who recommend to one another, uh, except those who believe and did righteous deeds, and recommend one another with truth and patience. So those who advise one another with patience, those are the ones who are not in a, gl- in a great loss. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recommends in the Qur'an that if you're going to go by the Qur'an and if you're going to hold on to the sunnah, you need to have patience. You need, you need to have patience towards the obedience of Allah and towards following the sunnah. So it seems that patience is a great principle. Definitely. Patience is a great pr- principle. And don't forget something very important. We have to remember that patience is a main ingredient in all Islamic manners. It's a very important ingredient. There is no good principle or there's no virtue in Islam that you can think of except that you will find patience is a main ingredient in that. Let's take for example some of the things we talked about, like piety. Mm -hmm. Piety is a great principle in Islam. And no one can keep and remain upon piety except with patience. And this is why Allah says in a verse that we previously quoted, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِحُ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ All you who believe, fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah as He truly deserves, or to the best of your ability. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not die except in a state of al-Islam. It means you have to maintain that piety. How can you maintain it? Only with patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is actually meets a principle, a great principle in Islam, which is al-istiqamah, steadfastness, to remain upon Islam. Many people do righteous deeds and they, uh, they seize an opportunity of uh, enthusiasm, trying to do better, trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this kind of climax in their lives goes down and it reaches a bottom or a low point where they actually start to give up this type of 
this type of worship and obedience to Allah, but to maintain a level of worship, a level of, of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is called istiqamah, steadfastness, that you maintain that beautiful level. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, and this obviously needs a lot of patience. Let's take another beautiful Islamic concept or principle and virtue, which is generosity. Generosity is actually to have self-control over oneself so you do not fall into selfishness because naturally we are inclined to selfishness. We always want to have possessed things and keep them for ourselves. So in Islam, with patience, we have control, we take control over this mm-hmm. tendency, natural tendency, and what happens is that we uh, give precedence to generosity. So it definitely needs patience. Uh, husn al dhan which, which is usually, usually translated as good suspicion or having good thoughts about your brothers and your sisters. Naturally, we are inclined towards having suspicion, evil suspicion about people. We start to have doubts, we become skeptical about people, developing certain thoughts about them, trying to arrive at conclusions which are, which are baseless. This is called su al dhan in al-Islam. In order to have husn al dhan which is the opposite, definitely you need a lot of patience. So there's nothing good in al-Islam, there's no virtue in al-Islam you can think of except that you will find patience, a main ingredient in that great virtue or great principle or great act of worship. Do you think that's all? Actually, there is much more. Definitely. Justice. You need to have a lot of patience with justice. Justice is actually to have patience when you feel like you're going to be unjust. Modesty. Modesty is to restrain yourself from profanity and indecency. And you need definitely patience for that too. And then taqwa. You need patience with taqwa as well, which is piety. When you hold your desires, when you go against your desires and give precedence, precedence to the fear of Allah, to favor the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over your desires. So patience is a great component in a Muslim's life, in a Muslim's community, in a Muslim's way of life. To have, you have to have patience. We must have patience. So how did the prophets handle patience? The prophets of Allah, may Allah shower them with mercy and blessings, all of them had patience. If you read their stories in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, you will see that patience was always there, or patient perseverance. They resisted all types of oppression, all types of opposition, and they were patient in the face of that. Actually, their people used to inflict harm upon them, but they were patient. They never tried to take revenge. They never tried to avenge themselves or retaliate. They actually were calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide their people and to show them with mercy. The great example is our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was given the message, the amana of Islam is very heavy. This is what Allah says, that the heavens, the earth, and the mountains declined. They did not want to hold or carry the amana or the trust of Islam because it's very heavy. It's, it's a great burden. It's a responsibility. The Prophet ﷺ carried that message and he spread it to the world. So this needed and this took a lot of patience. No one on earth could handle that but the Prophet ﷺ who had the greatest amount of, of patience a human would ever have on the face of earth. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him to be his messenger and his prophet. The messenger ﷺ had a lot of patience when he gave da'wah to his people. They resisted him. They tried to persecute him. They actually persecuted, tortured his companions and killed many of them. The Prophet ﷺ was patient. He was patient even when he was expelled out of his home, out of his hometown, Mecca. And that was a great calamity and a great challenge. The Prophet ﷺ had to travel to a new town, to a new place, and start his da'wah. The Prophet ﷺ had to, or he handled his enemies with a lot of patience, even when they uh, caused injury to him, even when they uh, broke his teeth and they cut his face during the battle of Uhud the Prophet ﷺ finally said Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun Oh Allah forgive my people because they don't really understand what they're doing they don't really understand the, the, the gravity of the evil they are doing so the Prophet ﷺ was patient he was even patient with his companions some of them some of the Bedouins when they came to him they were very harsh he was patient with them. He was patient when he was teaching his companions. He was patient when he was dealing with his enemies. He was patient when he was handling and running the affairs of the Muslim Ummah. That was our great Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are great Prophets, uh, great 
uh, and great personality, great personalities in Islam who really handled different situations with a lot of patience. But the great example is the Prophet Sallallahu What we mentioned about his life is not all what we have. Actually, we have much more than that. Definitely, we have a lot more. But when we come back from the short break, please stay tuned. Lord, I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Virtues of Ramadan The month of Ramadan is the best month of the entire year according to Islam. It has many virtues that Muslims should benefit from. Do not lose the chance of this blessed month and join Dr. Haytham Al-Haddad in his program, Virtues of Ramadan. Ramadan is a very unique opportunity for all of us. It is a very unique occasion for all Muslims all over the world. We are going to discuss certain issues related to Qiyamul Layl and how to observe the night prayer. We are also going to speak about Zakah, insha'Allah. We are going to speak about Sadaqa. Virtues of Ramadan in Ramadan on Huda TV. Amazing stories. In this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily, us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. Amazing Stories in Ramadan on Hoda TV. The story of Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the names of everything. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam approached that fire and he was surprised. The arrow killed the boy. If you want to be saved in this world, get on the ark of Islam. <laughs> Just a simple man trying hard to understand. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to One Step Closer. Dear viewers, remember that you can always call us on this number, country code 202 38 555 248 or 249, or you can send us an email at one step closer at to the dot TV. Sheikh, patience. How can we use patience to get closer to Allah? Uh, the, patience is one of the main vehicles that lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, patience is a great principle and it's enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu, uh, inna Allah sabirin wa Allahu yuhibbu sabirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the patient ones. So if we have patience, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us His love, will love us. And that's definitely a great step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But patience in Islam has, is, is some sort of an art which we will try to speak on today, we'll try yes. to handle, try to explain. Uh, but it's one of the main vehicles that leads us to Allah because Allah really loves the people of patience. And uh, actually the people of patience are very rare among humanity. We have a phone call. We have Sister Aisha from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Um, 
um, I called him, but I was quite nervous. I saw the sound I tried to speak slower. And what I wanted to say is two things. One of them was something that Ali bin Abi Talib said about patience. And I wanted to say something about uh, the selfishness that was just mentioned. So I'll start with what Ali bin Abi Talib said. Uh, I'm sorry, sister. Could you please repeat that again? You, you said you want to say something that Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib said? Yeah. Um, he went to Ashtar to control him upon the death of one of his sons. So it was, I mean, at that kind of uh, moment has died around you, you would become impatient. And you know, at that point, someone can lose some of their patience. So Ali wanted to control him. So he said that if you are sad, then you are deserving of mercy. That could be something in place of what was lost or destroyed. And know that if you are patient, everything that was destined for you and preordained for you occurs, and you will reward it if you complain and are hopeless. Likewise, all that was destined for you will echo, except that you will be blamed for the impatience at Allah's will. Uh, I also want to say something about uh, selfishness. You, you, mentioned, you just mentioned selfishness. Um, and he said that, you know, generosity is preferred. But my teacher, my family teacher, she taught me a completely different thing about selfishness. She said that it's a very good trait. Because a kind person would obviously very self be very selfish. They would love themselves the most. So that's why they would never do anything wrong. They wouldn't want to harm themselves in reality, in the hereafter. So that would be their selfishness, loving themselves. And that selfishness would cause them to be modest, patient, generous, and so on and so forth. So that's how I look at it. So maybe, uh, hello? Yes, yes, go, go on. on. sister. Yes, sister. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, mashallah, I'm a great show. Thank you, sister. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Wa, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for calling one step closer. MashaAllah, I, mean, I believe these were, these were very good points, MashaAllah. And patience actually, the, beautiful, the beauty about patience, and this is what we are trying to do this, uh, during this show, is really to take great principles in mm-hmm. Islam that, could, that everybody could relate to, mm-hmm. everybody needs them at every time, at, at every moment in their lives. Patience is something that uh, has to do with everything we do. Yes. Like with everything we do, we need patience. Mm-hmm. In, in, in teaching ourselves, we need patience. In coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need patience. Yes. In ob- uh, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need patience. In even uh, cultivating a better character, cultivating a better understanding in Islam, uh, increasing our worship, even, even dealing with people. In mm-hmm. all aspects, we need patience. Yes. Just like the types of patience you mentioned, uh, which the Muslim scholars detected, were ob- uh, patience to keep on obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Obviously, it takes a lot of patience mm-hmm. to to pray all the prayers and to fast and to do, do the zakah and to give the other obligations as well towards yes. people. So it takes a lot of patience. It's not something that uh, we naturally do, but we have mm-hmm. to go against our own desire, yes. our own selfishness. We have to go against that mm-hmm. uh, and to maintain that level of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously as there are many temptations in life, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to sin and desire, yes. it takes a lot of energy, a lot of determination, a lot of focus and a lot of patience in order to keep away from these sins, because we keep going through ups and downs yes. in terms of our self-control and our obedience to Allah. Uh, so in the weakest moments, we're very likely to fall into sin. But mm-hmm. here we need, we need patience to keep ourselves under control. Yes. So this is the second type of patience. And the third type of patience, patience which you mentioned, is uh, to be patient in the face of the uh, decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for us, mm-hmm. uh, hardships, calamities, and not only the, the, the negative aspects, even the positive aspects, because yes. some people are not even patient with wealth being given to them. Definitely. So they don't know how to handle that well and be, still be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. So patience actually permeates every aspect of our lives. Yes. Everything we do, everything we, we deal with, we need patience with it. Definitely. Yeah. We have actually two great examples. A prophet, the prophet Ayyub, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave him sickness. Yes. For a great time, he took all uh, his all his uh, daughters and sons, yes. and then he was he was patient. He said that for the same time that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave me good health, I'm gonna be patient until until Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives me back my health. Subhanallah. And then, he, but, uh, because of his patience, the fruit of that patience that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brought back his wealth and brought back and brought back his uh, children. He doubled his, the, the number of his children. Subhanahu wa Yes. And also we have the, the example of the Prophet Sulaiman. Allah no. subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, gave him great wealth. He was patient. 
He had patience with that wealth and he did not do any injustice. Of course, he's the Prophet of Allah. SubhanAllah. So these really are, are like great two examples of, yes. of the dec- like Allah's decree, whether it's good and bad. Yes, yeah. yes, that's true. That's, mm-hmm. that's a very beautiful example. And mm-hmm. imagine most people now, when, they, when we think about patience, straight away Prophet Ayyub comes to mind. Yes, definitely. Because he really, he, he, he accepted the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm-hmm. was patient with that and he never complained. Yes. And he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wisdom behind this. So definitely if you want, if we want to get one step closer or many steps closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala patience will always push us forward closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the verses that we uh, referred to previously when Allah praises the people when they are uh, hit with calamity they always remember the reality of this yes. life. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It's not only a statement that we say, but it's actually it's a, it's a state of mind. Yes. Inna lillah. From Allah we have come. We belong to Allah. Mm-hmm. So we don't belong to ourselves. We didn't come to this world by our own merit, by our yes. own power. Allah brought mm-hmm. us here. Definitely. So He brought us for a purpose. Mm-hmm. So, and He's fulfilling this purpose. So from Allah we come. Allah created us. And to Allah we shall return. So this is not life. It's, it's not our real life, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ The real life is the next one. Yes. Is, it's either in paradise or in hellfire. That's the real life because it's going to be there forever. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. definitely. So, and actually, when we talk about patience, almost everyone has a personal experience mm-hmm. when it comes to patience. And, uh, you know, anyone can, everybody has some, some kind of an experience in their lives where they really needed patience and patience uh, paid back Definitely. when they held on mm-hmm. to it and but how do you think that really patience can bring us closer to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wallahi uh, if we uh, the thing is for example if we follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like we did with Ar-Rifq step by step yeah. that's patience step by step and we have to remember all the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he advised us, advised us with patience he said إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَالْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ وَالصَّبْرُ بِالتَّصَبْرُ that to uh, seek knowledge you have to be patient to seek uh, hilm, uh, um, yeah, calmness, is, yes, you need patience. Yeah. To seek patience, yeah. you need patience. Yes, definitely. So you need patience in everything. Subhanallah. So we have to strive, keep striving definitely. and so maintain if, that. If we patience. recall all these advices of the Prophet Sallallahu and also I remember that uh, when, when the Prophet Sallallahu went to Al Ta'if and he, he was giving the, 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 delivering the da'wah over in Ta'if and they totally. Subhanallah, they totally uh, uh, rejected him and they, they threw him outside the town and they ordered the, young, the youngsters of the town and the crazy, the fools of the town to stone him until he ran away from a ta'if, miles, miles away until he sat down and then he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the angel of the mountains and he told him, if you want me to bring down al-akhshabayn, the two great mountains of, uh, on the sides of the ta'if to break, uh, to, 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 ha- to knock them down on the ta'if, he said, no, maybe one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring from their, uh, from their backs or from their, their, their siblings, people that will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will worship Allah. That's patience. So if we learn from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we learn from his character, this this way, we will get closer to the Prophet ﷺ from learning from his example. That's true. So Allah, many times, we, 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 people mistreat us and we straight away we try to take revenge. We yes. try to retaliate. We're impatient with them. But look at the Prophet ﷺ, how much he had to go through mm-hmm. and so much pain. So, uh, sometimes, even they tried many times to kill him. Mm-hmm. But still, the Prophet ﷺ was making dua on behalf of them. Salam he was alayhi. calling upon Allah to really make them better people. So definitely, mm-hmm. patience will bring us closer to the Prophet ﷺ. And remember, every time we uh, follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ in these great acts of worship, these great principles of Islam, you're making one step closer to the Prophet ﷺ. And Salam every alayhi. step you make closer to the Prophet is actually a step to closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we actually seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking the example, following the example of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the path that leads to the pleasure of Allah and the obedience That's of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's true. Uh, Subhanallah. I also remember the Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyad, this, this, uh, I mean, this uh, pagan that used to, yes. um, used to bother the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he used to go behind his back and take his scarf and try to, 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 to strangle him. And one time when he was prostrating Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was prostrating in, in front of the Kaaba. He took the intestines of a, of a, of a dead animal and yes. he poured it over his back. Yes. And the Prophet Sallallahu he was patient. He did not, he did not do, and he did not do dua. He did not pray against them, but yet he was patient with them. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sheikh, could you uh, tell, like, tell us the fruits of, of patience? 
Well, the, pro- the fruits of patience obviously is, is that patience will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just pondering on the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu sabirin. The fact that Allah loves the patient ones, you know, what fruit mm-hmm. could be better than having or earning the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is the dream of every Muslim, of every true believer, mm-hmm. is to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the scholars have always said, have always said, they said, لَيْسَ الْأَمْرُ فِي أَن تُحِبْ وَلَكِنَّ الْأَمْرَ فِي أَن تُحَبْ no. It's not about really getting yourself to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, that's a basic level, obviously, in Islam. Mm-hmm. But the greater level is to really earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what you have to work for all your life long. And this mm-hmm. is the greatest thing in Islam. Mm-hmm. If you reach that, because Allah does not uh, put a soul that He loves, Allah does not put it in the hellfire. So this is, this is how patience, definitely, this is one of the great fruits of patience. But sometimes people think about patience as being only a means to the hereafter, but it's mm-hmm. also a means in this world. Definitely. And everybody, any expert in any field, any successful person in any field, ask them about the things that brought them to that level of, mm-hmm. of excellence, of, of success. Definitely, you're going to find patience as one of their main tools, one of their main, the main ingredients of their success. Definitely. No one succeeds in this life except with patience. Mm-hmm. In anything you try to handle, as you said, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, no. you, want to, you, want to, you want to have knowledge, you have to strive. Yes. And have the patience by keep seeking knowledge. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of patience. Mm-hmm. And this is something I've seen personally. Many people, they had a lot of enthusiasm, they wanted to learn the deen, but what happened over some t- after some time, the zeal went down. Mm-hmm. But there were some people who really maintained a great level of enthusiasm and determination and consistency. Mm-hmm. And those were the people. Those are the people who became scholars today, Definitely. and strong students of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same as well with trying. So many people ask the question: How can we have patience? How can I develop patience? Well, obviously there are many things that we can do. One of them is the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: "Wa the, if you want to have patience, you want to develop patience in your character, try. Try it. Strive mm-hmm. to have it. When yourself pushes you to retaliate, to act based upon your anger or mm-hmm. your reaction, your immediate reaction, hold, hold back and tell it, no, I have to have patience. Mm-hmm. You st- it's a habit. So it's a habit. This is one of the avenues that we can use to get patience. Uh, we have a phone call. We have uh, Sister Wafat from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to One Step Closer. Uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, this wonderful show. You, mashallah, doing a very good job. Uh, just a quick question, Sheikh. Um, the one, um, when the one meets beloved one, uh, especially the daughter or the son, um, he, he definitely come, comes very hard times, very severe pain in his heart for meeting this beloved one. Uh, he, he may say, Alhamdulillah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Yet he still recalls that beloved one. He uh, still uh, talk about him, still uh, remember what he used to do, what he used to say. Uh, does this contradict with being patient? Okay. This is my question. Okay. So, it's, so, it's, so a, it's a very yes. common question. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Sister Wafa, for this question. I, I really need. I think we really need to answer this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I believe we have another phone call. We have Sister Habiba from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Hello, alaikum salam. Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. Um, my question is: um, in a situation where a person lacks patience that much, or he's too aggressive, so does that kind of affect his, his iman? Or like during Ramadan, or the, like the person gets too aggressive, or when he he gets he gets angry, or he wants something real bad and he doesn't get it, so he gets real aggressive. So that does that affect his fasting? Okay, okay. That, in some kind of way. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, l- let me answer first, uh, Sister Wafa, Wafa's question. Uh, the issue of sometimes people go through a calamity, they lose a loved one, mm-hmm. and they feel sadness. Obviously, the Prophet ﷺ, when he lost his son Ibrahim mm-hmm. as he was burying him, he mm-hmm. said uh, that uh, the eye sheds tears and the heart feels sad, mm-hmm. but we only say what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So that's the difference. No. With uh, feelings, having this kind of sadness, feeling this sorrow, 
is definitely a human thing. We cannot break from that. We always have this. But as long as this does not lead us to transgress the limits of Allah, if, we don't, if it doesn't push us to fall into a sin or to do something wrong, then definitely, inshallah, this is within the legitimate uh, bound within the circle of legitimacy but sometimes people are just they feel something in their hearts against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even though they might not say it but they mm-hmm. feel it and inevitably at some stage it will show that in their hearts they feel oh Allah why did you do this to me mm-hmm. some people feel that and that's very dangerous but just feeling or having the human kind of uh, emotion that I lost a loved one, you feel sad for them, you feel sorry for them, you feel the pain. Mm -hmm. That's just human and you cannot do away with that. That's impossible. So we're just human beings. Uh, And as I said, the criterion is as long as you do not, this does not push you into a sin, then definitely, inshallah, you will be right. So, Sheikh, so the measure is the pleasure of Allah. If we measure our acts or our thoughts or what we say, to the pleasure of Allah. If, it's, if it goes with it, that's no problem. That's, that's, that's a human thing. It's a and humane that's thing. That's if it goes against it, then yeah. we need to ask for your Yes, but something we have to pay attention to that you shouldn't find in your heart a feeling against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. You, you, for example, some people start to doubt mm-hmm. the wisdom of Allah, the yes. knowledge of Allah. Yes. Why did Allah, or the mercy of Allah. That's a very serious thing. So as long as you have right thoughts about Allah mm-hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't say anything wrong or do anything wrong, then inshallah that's all right. Okay. Dear viewers, stay tuned for a lot more about patience. Salam alaikum. Lord, I am just a simple man trying hard to understand. Closing the gap. Why closing the gap? In this program, Sheikh Yusuf Estes and Omar Dunlap are going to discuss how to bridge the gap between peoples of different cultures and orientations. The gap between males and females, Muslims and non-Muslims, the East and the West. Human beings feel like that they're being slighted one way or the other. The gap between the youth and the elders, the gap between various status in working, the work field and education, and then trying to provide solutions for these particular problems. All of this and more in Closing the Gap in Ramadan on Hoda TV. We need to strive to know the ruling of the Sharia on a particular incident. Why scholars had to put a lot of effort trying to figure out how to give the ruling on such topics and issues. Islam tells you to look good, to smell good. The reason of the recession was the collaboration between insurance companies and the banks. Some scholars, though stated that it is permissible for you to insure because you're compelled to do this by the government by law but you're not allowed to benefit from the insurance policy women around the prophet What do you know about women in Islam? Do you know the role that women played in Islamic history? Sheikh Ismail Rafai will relate the stories of the Prophet's wives in the program, Women Around the Prophet. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, the person he decided that this Quran should stay with and be left with was none other than our mother Hafsa bint al-Khattab. So this whole Quran was left with her. This is a great trust. Khadija bint Khuwaylid. She is Afqa Nisail Ummah. She's the most knowledgeable of this Ummah. Because she is my mother, your mother, and the mother of all the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women around the Prophet in Ramadan on Hoda TV. I am just a simple man trying hard to understand. Assalamu alaikum 
wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to One Step Closer. Sheikh, answering Sister Habiba's question, does it affect our fasting to not be patient, to express our anger? Yes, I believe her question was, um, mashallah, I mean, it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's a very common case. Mm -hmm. Almost everyone goes through the same thing, that mm -hmm. we go through uh, sometimes a certain situation, and it really pushes us beyond our limits. Sometimes we express our anger, sometimes we just can't keep ourselves under control. Uh, what I w my advice would be is that don't forget that this month is the month of patience. Mm -hmm. And fasting is based on patience as well. Definitely. Because that's one of the most powerful human instincts. Mm -hmm. The need for food and drink. Mm -hmm. And even uh, conjugal relations. Mm -hmm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trains us and He's teaching us how to keep these under control. That's so true. we're supposed with patience, one of the fruits of patience is having control. And actually control is an element of taqwa as well. Mm -hmm. This is what Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ yeah. So if we happen to fall into this or express our anger, uh, we should stra straight away seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make istighfar, and hopefully it will not invalidate the fast. It does, doesn't actually invalidate the fast, but if you wrong someone, or if you abuse someone verbally or physically, it could lead to diminishing your reward or the reward of fasting. So just be careful, and inshallah we'll try to talk about how we can increase... Some people might ask the question, how can, I want to become a, a, a more patient person. How can I develop that? That's a very valid question, and inshallah we'll try to deal with it. Inshallah, we'll deal with that after we take that phone call. Uh, we have brother Muhammad from, from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to One Step Closer. It's such a nice, uh, Sheikh Matasam, thank you so much for speaking on such nice topics. And thank bringing us closer to Allah, Allah Almighty. Thank you very much. I would like to ask Sheikh Matasam. Go ahead, brother. Uh, uh, not just me, like my family is facing you know, health challenges from a long time right now. Uh, my wife as well as me, we have a lot of health challenges, like a lot of problems, like pains and all. Is asking for, uh, you know, asking Allah for help in uh, during prayer or uh, out of the prayer, desperately asking for it here, uh, you know, crying for it here. Is, will it be considered impatience or what? Because sometimes uh, the pain becomes so much that, you know, uh, we tend to cry and ask Almighty to cure our pain here. Yes. Uh, I don't want to be impatient in front of Allah because I want to be closer to Him here. Yes. So will that be you know considered impatient? That's what my question is. Okay. And because my wife's condition also you know going so bad for a long time here, she's also losing her patience. Now how do we get our patience back? Okay. <laughs> what do we do you know when we face such challenges? Yes, I ask Allah to make things easy for you and your wife and your family. And, uh, thank you so much for the Thank you very much for calling, Akhi Muhammad. Uh, actually, th that's another profound question because, <laughs> mashallah, we all go through hardships, calamities. And really, my advice would be, Brother Muhammad, that's my advice to myself, to you and your family, is that uh, don't forget, when calamity hits, this could be a sign that Allah loves you. If you. Especially if you keep upon obedience. Now, definitely, Allah loves to hear the voice of His servant asking Allah's help. So this has nothing to do with patience. This is why Imam ya al, al Prophet Yaqub salam, when he lost his son uh, Yusuf salam, he said, "Innama ashku bathi wa huzni I only uh, express my sorrow to Allah subhanahu wa taala, my sadness to Allah. Okay. So don't. A very good sign of a person having patience is that he does not complain about Allah or about the decree of Allah to people, mm -hmm. but he only complains to Allah. That's a sign of patience actually, it's not a, sh a sign of impatience. But how to develop patience, inshallah, we sh said this is something that we will talk about, but I believe we have... Yeah, we have uh, phone another phone call. We have uh, Sister Ilham from Syria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi You mentioned many beautiful aspects that have to do with patience, like uh, piety, generosity. I think that patience is something that is needed with dealing with children, especially in bringing up the children. You know, some people take this for granted, but children need special care, especially at, the, at an age when their personalities are building up. In such an age, you see the child asking many questions, but he is pathetic because everybody asks him to be silent. No, this requires patience. His questions should be answered in an Islamic way. Some people consider answering ch children's questions as a waste of time. They don't have the time to have patience with them. No, it is not a waste of time. Being patient with children helps in building up a strong gener coming generation. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so concerned about children. He gave them so much love and care and patience. He spent many time with them. This is why they were the heroes that we are proud of nowadays. 
So we should be patient with children and we, we should teach them how to be patient from an early age because this will help them so much in the future. And thank you very much for this. Thank you, Sister. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah. Thank you very much, Sister Ilham. And uh, I believe we have another phone call from Sudan. We have Brother Ahmed. Salaamu Alaikum. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're live on okay. One Step Closer, Brother Ahmed. Go ahead. Okay. I think it was cut off. Uh, okay, just go. Try and, uh, I, need, I need to focus on the point where how we can develop patience because that's a common question. Somebody might say, I'm by nature, I'm impatient mm-hmm. by nature. So what can I do to increase my patience? Definitely the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, وإنما الصبر بالتصبر. Try and strive. Try to keep yourself patient. The moment you, you, your anger will, uh, anger will break out, hold it back. Mm-hmm. That's the moment. So it's a matter of training and building a, a habit. Another thing is having knowledge. Knowledge is the key to patience. Many people don't know, don't know, know that. And this is what Allah says when He praised the people of patience. Allah says about them that they say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Once you understand the reality of this life, of this world, and you keep that in mind, all the time you will have patience. Imagine when someone mistreats you, Definitely you will try to react to that. But if you realize that this person has just lo- lost a loved one or has just, been, has just come out from a calamity, you will give them an excuse. Straight away you start to see things from a, through a different paradigm, from a different, uh, through a different outlook. Mm-hmm. So this is the key to patience. Once you re- realize that this life is about test, and the real life is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you maintain good thoughts about Allah, that He's wise, He's the all-knowing, and He is merciful, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what He's doing to you, definitely this is going to give you patience. So that's the key to patience. And there are, these are two things. Yaqeen, which is certainty, the mm-hmm. higher level of knowledge, and patience, make the leaders in any ummah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ We made them guides to people, imams to people, when they had patience and they had yaqeen, certainty, in our signs. This is why Imam Taymiyyah says, بِالصَّبْرِ تُنَالُ الْإِمَامَةُ بِالدِّينَ With patience and certainty, people will become leaders and imams in matters of the deen. Definitely. Uh, we have uh, Brother uh, Ahmed uh, from Sudan. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes, brother. Uh, thank you, Sheikh, and thank you, brother, for uh, such a nice program. Uh, I have a question, but uh, my question is uh, out of today's uh, topic. I don't know if uh, uh, I'm allowed to ask the question. It's, uh, it's outside the topic. Okay, go go ahead, but try to be, be brief, Ahmed, because I think we're we're running okay. out of time. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. My question is about the, the fasting during the uh, safar. Uh, on twenty fifth, uh, I'm uh, traveling, and uh, uh, my whole I mean the, the uh, whole day will be in travel. So, uh, am I allowed to uh, not fast on that day, or uh, I have to fast? Okay. And the second question is about Taraweeh prayer. Is it 8 rakat, 12 rakat, or 20? Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Brother Ahmed, I, I will ask you to send me these emails, uh, or send me these questions as an email. Please, send them to one step closer at twitter.tv, and I will reply to you. And uh, obviously I know that Shaykh Muhammad Salah answered these questions already, but just to answer, because we promised to take your questions, send them to me as an email and I will reply to you via email inshallah, so you'll get the answers. Uh, but we'll try to maintain or keep yes. this episode or this show on the main topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, something Sister Ilham said which was very important, we definitely need patience with our kids. Because that's a test mm-hmm. and that's a training for patience. Mm-hmm. I do train myself on patience with my kids. Mm-hmm. Sometimes obviously I don't make it, yes. but try my best because each, each time you want to test, test yourself, mm-hmm. it's with kids. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to go back to the point that really knowledge is the key to patience. Knowledge. Once you know, for example, there was one day one person, and this is a common story that I know most people have heard of. He was sitting in an airport and he actually bought a, 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 some candies. And he was actually eating from it. He sat on the, on the, on the chair mm-hmm. and uh, he started eating from it. And there was another person next to him eating from it as well. So he felt really bad how rude that person was. He was eating from my uh, you know, bag of candy or whatever it is. So then he just stood up and left. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, then he put his or oh, it was a woman she put her hand in her uh, in her purse or in her uh, in her bag handbag and to find out that she hadn't opened even the ba- or the the sack of candies that she bought hmm. and she realized that that candy belonged to the other person hmm. so then automatically patience was there. She realized that she was wrong. Mm-hmm. She was trying to have patience when he was eating from it. But mm-hmm. now actually she, she, she realized she was wrong. Imagine she arrived at this conclusion when she was sitting and that person was eating. Mm-hmm. She would have felt embarrassed about herself. So knowledge is a very powerful tool in patience. Remember mm-hmm. the reality of this life. Remember the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom of Allah, the mercy of Allah. Definitely. You will definitely have patience it's a very powerful tool and hopefully there are so much to, so many things to say about patience Definitely. but it's just we try to share some things so from now on try to be patient keep yourself under control remember you're getting one step closer to Allah one step closer to the Prophet ﷺ, and you're even reviving your soul and your heart inshallah Shaykh, unfortunately time's up Allah thank you for being with us thank you very much. Kareem, thank you dear viewers patience is an act of worship that would take us close to Allah And remember, if you have any comments, advices, anything that you might want to share with us, please send us an email at onestepcloseratuda.tv. And thank you for watching One Step Closer, and wait for us tomorrow for another act of worship that will take us one step closer towards Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Where's my place in your great plan, oh Lord? Lord, I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Where's my place in your great plan, oh Lord? Help this man